Hi there, my name is Laurent and I am a 37 years old Jedi. So, what do I have in store for you today? Well, today we're not building or assembling or deassembling anything, no. Today we are comparing. Comparison, comparison, yeah! Now, don't freak out, it's not one of those comparison things where we're gonna yeah. get this thingy and another yeah. thingy and just whatever uh -oh. thingy and just compare the thingies together. No, that's not one of those thingies. What we're going to compare today is a 4th generation gamer's computer PC against a 6th generation computer's gamer's PC. I'm not sure if I said those things in the right order. The 4th generation, as the name indicates, is a computer that's being built around a 4th generation Intel processor. As a 6th generation, as the name indicates, is a computer that's being built around a 6th generation Intel processor. Now, why such a thing? Why, why, I can hear you ask. Well, let's be relevant. The past few generations of Intel processors only brought us a marginal increase in performance from one to another. A game such as Call of Duty Modern Warfare or Doom run very well on 6th generation all the way down to 1st generation of i7 Intel processors. So is it still relevant to replace our different components a year to another and to upgrade generation to another so that we have the most performant gear out there? I'm not that sure, but together we are going to find out. Hi there, I am 4th generation PC and I am 6. Just 6? Yeah, just 6. So I am 4th generation PC and I am powered by an i7-4790K. I've been overclocked from 4GHz all the way to 4.6GHz and yes, I remain cool because I'm water cooled. <laughs> Get it? Cool water. Yeah. Okay. Um, memory wise, I have 16GB of DDR3 clocked at 1600MHz. Uh, I boot on a 500GB solid state hard disk. Most excitingly, I have a GeForce GTX 980 from Asus. Now it's a strict series, meaning that it's been overclocked. Asus claims that this overclocking will allow me to produce 30% more power than a normal 980. It's a pretty big video card, but as we all know, size matters. Awesome. Well, I am powered with an i7 6700K, and yes, I am as well overclocked from 4 GHz all the way to 4.5 GHz. Yes, I am water cooled as well. And even though we are different generation of CPUs, we do share a lot of similarities. We have the same L2 memory cache of 8 MB and we have the same number of cores, 8 of them threaded. Meaning that when we're gonna run our little evaluation and compare our performances, we will really be comparing the architecture of the CPUs as well and Skylake. Memory rise, I have 32 GB of DDR4 RAM and clocked at 3000 MHz and I boot on a 512 GB M.2 solid state drive stick which makes it very interesting for us. The bandwidth is very different from that thing. I am impressed. Most excitingly, I have a GeForce GTX 1080 from NVIDIA, the Founders Edition. And that means I got 8 gigabytes of DDR5 memory to play with compared to 4 on that side of the bench. And what's really cool is a Pascal architecture which runs the old GPU. Well, you know, if it makes you feel any better, you are good looking. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> I'm in it. You're, you're not bad yourself. Yeah, we well, have to go. Yeah, go. For sure.
Impressive. The sixth generation computer just doesn't cut it, does it? The processor just runs as well as the fourth generation processor. I think it's like 5% difference. And the best thing about it was its GPU, the video card, which you can easily put on a fourth generation computer and get the 4K performances you would want to play the latest games. So, frankly talking, yeah, a little bit disappointed. I mean, the memory really was great. DDR4 is kind of cool, not that cool though. And the M.2 SSD was just stellar, but it's still bottlenecked by the sixth generation Skylake processor. And so if you are going to look at spending some money to upgrade your computer, do it on the video card. Don't do it on anything else. Not until Intel produces a 7th or 8th generation processor was actually worth it. Well, I'll tell you, I've been around computers for a long time. And, well, a long time is since the uh, 80s, 90s. And back then, when we had a new architecture for a processor, say from 386 to 486, it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then when we went from 486 to Pentium, it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, today, when I go from 4th generation processor, so a Haswell processor architecture to a Skylake, I'm like... <laughs> so at the end of the day, um, I, I, I think that Intel is really stuck. There is no way around it. The manufacturing process is stuck at 14 or 10 nanometer and even then it's gonna take us a couple of years until we get something commercially viable 
so we're gonna get used to this but that also means we don't have to spend as much money to get the best possible performances out there yeah hmm well that's it for me I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it if you did like it like it if you didn't like it don't like it in both ways make sure to subscribe to my little channel makes me feel special if you have any comments make sure to add them down there make sure to add them in the comment section and I will make sure to answer them ASAP